All right, in this video, we're gonna address how to uh, create years for our CG head. Uh, <coughs> and uh, as I said before, um, rather than going into my model and extruding parts out uh, or starting from some sort of polygon, um, uh, sometimes a much better technique <coughs> is to actually go in there and draw the topology yourself. So I'm gonna start by hiding this guy right here, creating a layer for him, just going this head for now, save, alright, then I'm going to go into the side viewport uh, right here, and I'm going to start drawing some of the main features of my ear, um, and again, I'm going to be using uh, planes and extruding technique, so, <coughs> And again, sometimes it's uh, 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 important for you to have an understanding of what's going on here. Because um, again, this is a flat image, so uh, you can only give you so much information. So uh, again, we have like this, this border area right here. But one thing to keep in mind is also the indentation areas. Uh, this one and this one being somewhat same depth. And then uh, areas like this and this one being a lot deeper. <laughs> uh, but again, we're going to start by actually drawing in some of the main features that we see right here. So uh, I'm going to start by going into create and I'm just going to create a plane uh, on the polygon. Plane. <laughs> I'm just going to start over here. Okay, and I'm pressing 4 so I can see um, through my geometry. And uh, again, depending on the on your workflow, you might want to, uh, and depending on how how much how much geometry you have in your on your on your head, uh, it's going to be a little different. Uh, I'm going to keep my polygons somewhat large because um, I know the faces on my head are a little uh, larger so when it comes time to attaching everything it's going to make it easier for me to kind of bring it together um, if your head has more um, uh, subdivisions than that then you can go ahead and create smaller faces and be more detailed um, and again I'm just going to start by just kind of molding some of this vertices into shape then I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to keep my edit mesh tools right here. So I'm going to go into extrude. Move this out. Rotate it into place. Um, probably uh, it's a better idea to actually go around and do the whole thing rather than having to uh, go into vertex mode um, and moving uh, each one individually just kind of makes it more efficient so again pressing G to repeat the last command which is extrude and then this switch into rotation by pressing E alright G again alright and again when it comes to this it's very important to know uh, some shortcuts just to kind of make it easier uh, not only easier but it uh, makes your work for a lot faster so G Rotation. Okay. Uh, okay, so my last command there changed, so I just need to go back and click on extrude again. Rotation. Okay, and again, at this point, I'm not really that much concerned about how large these polygons are, because as I start creating other pieces, I'm going to have to go in there and uh, create more subdivisions and more detail. So, I'm just trying to get the general idea of what's happening here. And rotation. Rotation. And let's just do one more. Okay, now I'm going to go into my vertex mode and just uh, fix this up a little bit. Alright, and uh, right now, <coughs> again, I'm using the reference from my uh, image plane. 
Uh, but even if it makes it easy, if you don't have something that's very clear in your image, you can definitely bring in image planes with a more clear uh, ear if it, makes, if it makes it easier for you. That's the reason we're making it separate, just so you can go in there and add the detail that you need and then worry about attaching uh, after the fact. All right, so let's see, we have this and then we have a couple more details here that we can draw in. Uh, this being one of them. Uh, so again, I want to go into create. Um, actually, I want to move on to a different file. So uh, again, you go in, in here and you start doing the details uh, like this. All right. And again, you want to go in there and kind of draw in the main features, the main uh, contours of this ear. So I started with this and again, uh, notice that on this one, I actually started all the way here because these parts connect all the way around. And then this, uh, and again, knowing that I was actually to be, able to, I'm going to be able to create this detail right here by extruding a couple more faces. Um, so this will be the beginning stage. Let's move on to a, uh, let's see. Okay, <clears throat> so again, in this file, <clears throat> I started already connecting some of these of the geometry and creating a little bit of depth, all right? Another thing that I ended up doing at this point also, it's keeping into account that, uh, again, this is a three-dimensional object and not all the detail that needs to be created for this can be created on the side viewport. So I went into the front viewport, all right? And again, even though it's not the, the same image, uh, I think what I settled on doing was on creating as much detail as I can using the side viewport and then going into the front, just making sure that it's kind of, you know, uh, giving it that, that uh, 3D perspective. And then uh, once I'm done, I'm just gonna be able to go back to the front and just kind of move things around to make it fit what's going on in there. Uh, so again, at this stage, I started creating a little bit of depth um, by extruding in some uh, objects, I mean some faces. I also connected, um, it's all one piece, so uh, I was able to go in here and start connecting some of the faces um, to their corresponding area. Uh, and again, I'm kind of smoothing it out just to see, uh, you know, if it's actually matching what our ear is doing here okay and that looks pretty good so then the next step <coughs> is going in here and uh, trying to uh, close some of these gaps and again uh, the thing about the ear is that unlike the face and having to be mindful about loops and things like that for the formation this is in kind of an irregular model all right so you can be a little bit more um, <coughs> flexible as far as how you go about creating some of the detail here um, uh, but some of the, some of the rules do apply, like <clears throat> making sure that if you have triangles, you keep them to a minimum. Uh, but even if you do, and something that's not going to deform for animation purposes, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, so again, if I want to go in here, just assure that I'm in edge mode. And just select all these edges. Go into mesh start filling holes all right and again I'm uh, at this point I'm just kind of cons uh, I'm concerned about making sure that I start connecting this geometry um, I can later on go back and see if there's anything else that I can do about making sure that I don't have this triangle here but for now it's, ju it's just kind of doing what it's supposed to do uh, and again same thing here um, and I get, keep it in mind that this is one of those areas that's going to have to have a deeper uh, kind of hole than what we have going on here. Um, we could gap this um, hole, I mean cap it. All right, and we could just kind of go in here and start making some connections. Again, um, if I wanted to make this into a four-sided polygon, I, I could just create an edge right here and start connecting. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that by going into my interactive split tool. All 
right? And again, you have uh, a little bit more of a free range of, uh, as far as how you go about uh, creating the shape of this because it's uh, an irregular shape <clears throat> and it's not something that needs to be the form for the animation. Uh, but starting from something that creates the main culture, uh, curvature of your ear uh, makes it easier to get the right shape. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and connect this component. All right. So that's that. And I can start going in here and start connecting some of these components here as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next file. Let's go to ear four. Okay, I think this is a little bit too far. Uh, let's go to three. <coughs> Alright, so again, in this file, you can see that I went in there and I started kind of filling in all the gaps. Um, Alright, and again, a little bit different than the decisions that I was making on the last one. I'm not too concerned about some of the triangles that I'm creating here. I did find a way to make this into a four-sided, but I still have a triangle right here. I connected um, or bridged these faces. <clears throat> and again, I'm kind of going back and forth between the smoothing, uh, the smooth version and the geometry version just to make sure that everything is being uh, uh, welded correctly. Because if you, if you wouldn't, you would see some sort of either weird deformation or some sort of sharp edge. <clears throat> So on the next version, now that I have the main definition of my ear and I've kind of gone in here and uh, filled in some of these gaps in between, I'm going to start adding some depth to my ear. So I'm just going to go, uh, especially to these areas that have the deeper holes. And that's in version 4. <coughs> All right. And again, it was just a matter of either taking what was already air there and pushing it back or either going in there and doing some sort of extrusion, okay? <clears throat> and again, we're starting to see a little bit of more irregular geometry going on here. Um, I still have, you know, if I was working on this file, I'd probably have to go in here and clean this up a bit. Um, you can see that I also went in here into this area and I extruded the faces in. Um, again, by adding a subdivision here and extruding the, that in, and that was and that's what gave me this kind of uh, curve in kind of detail that I have going on. Because <clears throat> again, that's something that you don't see in your uh, reference, but it's actually kind of curved in. So you want to have something along the lines of that. Um, and this part right here, <clears throat> something I just have to kind of make sure that I went in there and extrude it in. Again, um, don't have to do much in here because that's some, that's probably a detail that's never going to be too close to our virtual camera or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and I also went and made sure that there was... Uh, I started creating some geometry that's going to be able to help me connect to the head as, uh, you know, when I get to that point. <clears throat> um, and again, just making sure that everything's in quads. Uh, but as you can see, there are some areas in here where we, we might be able to find some triangles. And again, these areas are not that important. Uh, so, you know, um, uh, th it really depends on, on, on the aim of the project. So, <clears throat> if you really needed something that was all based on quads, you would take the time to actually go in there and do the details and change it uh, and make it as perfect as you can. If it's not something that's relevant to what you're doing, uh, you know, in areas like this, you don't really have to spend that much time. So let's move on to the next one. Let's see, here, six, here, five. All right. So uh, again, in the last file, you saw me going in here and start adding some geometry here for the transition between the ear and the face. So I went into my face and I started deleting some faces. Um, <clears throat> and again, I also kind of created the back of the ear right here with some geometry. And again, you're seeing some triangles. These are areas that are not uh, that big of a deal. Uh, some of these triangles can be kind of fixed in a very easy manner. For instance, this one. Two triangles together, an easy face is just going in there and deleting that face. 
um, things like that. So now the problem at this stage is, uh, you know, making sure that both the geometry around the, the, the gap that you created for your face uh, matches the number of polygons that you have going around uh, your edges. <clears throat> so you have to make a conscious decision about how you're going to go about it. Um, again, <clears throat> it looks like, let's see, uh, this has 10 polygons here. And uh, this one definitely has more going around. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and count it. But <clears throat> just based on the fact that I don't, you know, I have, I really like the topology that I created for my face. I'm not going to go ahead and remove or add more geometry here if I don't need to. All right. So <clears throat> especially for something that's, uh, again, a regular shape like this and it's something that doesn't need to be the form for animation, it's probably easier to go in here and either remove or add geometry as you need. And uh, let's just go to the last one. Okay. So then, it, again, it was a matter of going into my ear and making sure that the edges around the gap that I created for my face uh, <clears throat> matched what, uh, what was happening uh, around my ear and then going in here and adding a couple more details to make sure that it looked like a natural ear. Um, I think another thing that ended up happening in this was that I felt that um, the side uh, image that I, I was using as reference actually it was a little bit uh, had a little bit of perspective on it and I felt that the distance between the eye and the ear was a little bit too far. Like it just didn't look it didn't look realistic once I uh, um, I placed it in that position. So I ha and and again this is I think it's a conscious decision that I made on my last file and I made sure that it was actually closer um, to the eye than what it is on the picture. Because again my reference has a little bit of perspective. <clears throat> you know this is not an image that was uh, created for the sake of, uh, you know, creating a 3D model. So uh, you just have to make a conscious decision, again, to use the side image uh, mostly as a reference, but just kind of settle on the one that's kind of giving you the better details, which is the front. And then going in here and making sure that, uh, you know, everything's kind of in place as it needs to be. Um, okay. And let's just go ahead and make this into a uh, polygon and just see what's going on here. Again, trying very hard to make sure that I don't have triangles. Uh, at this point, I kind of needed one here. Again, this is something that I can address later on because I still I can still go into my head and add more details, uh, but I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to do that right now because <clears throat> I'm still going to have to attach the head to a body and things like that. I want to keep uh, this um, geometry flow as is, <clears throat> and then once my body is attached together, go in there and add as much detail as I need, um, or again, leave it as is, because that triangle doesn't seem to be doing mu that much of a damage there. And uh, again, another thing to be, um, unless this character was going to be bold, these are some uh, areas that are going to be covered by hair or, or whatever other detail. Um, okay, so this concludes uh, how you go about create a ear for a 3D head.